the first one. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you. Lord, we bless and we magnify your name. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the privilege to gather here another Monday. We thank you for good health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for life. We appreciate you for every woman on this platform. We thank you because there's never a day we have gathered to mourn over the life of another person or their love. And we appreciate you because you have been consistent all this while. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise for that. We pray, even as we're about to start today's meeting, Lord, we pray that you will take over, that all of us will decrease for you to increase. We pray that your purpose for today's meeting will be established in our midst. And that every time we come and we gather, Lord, there is something negative about our lives that will drop and there is something positive that you have kept for us that will be able to pick up we ask, so oh God, that the agenda for which we meet will be reflected in our lives as women, in everywhere we go as women, and your name at the end shall be glorified. Sweet Holy Ghost, we ask, so oh God, that you take over today. We ask, so oh that you teach us, you use our mouth for what you want us to do today, so that we give you all the glory at the end. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are, you are wonderful. Oh, you are worthy. Oh, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, Lord, we give you glory. We give you glory, Lord. Oh, as we honor. Oh, we give you glory, glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are, you are wonderful. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy. Oh, you are wonderful. You are worthy. You are worthy, Father. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you. Oh, there is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you. Oh, there is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you. Oh, there is none like you, there is none like you, Jesus, there is none like you. We depend on you, Jesus, there is none like you. We rely on you, Jesus, there is none like you, there is none like you, there is none like you, oh, there is none like you, oh, there is none like you, oh, there is none like you, there is none like you, Jesus, there is none like you, oh, there is none like you, there is none like you, oh, there is none like you, there is none like you, oh, there is none like you, there is none like you, there is none like you, Jesus, there is none like you. As far as the heaven stands, stands above the earth, you are exalted, unlimited God. As far as the heaven stands, stands above the earth, you are exalted. Unlimited, you are 
exalted, you are exalted. Daddy, you are exalted, you are exalted. Oh, you are exalted, oh. You are exalted. Unlimited, God. Oh, you are exalted. Daddy, you are exalted. Oh, you are exalted, oh. Unlimited, God. You are exalted, Daddy. You are exalted. Oh, you are exalted. Oh, unlimited God. Oh, you are exalted, Daddy. You are exalted. Oh, you are exalted. Oh, unlimited God. As far as the heavens, as far as the heavens stand, stand above the air. You are exalted. You are exalted. Unlimited God. Oh. As far as the heavens stand, stand above the air. You are exalted. You are exalted. Unlimited God. As far as the heavens stand, stand above the air. You are exalted, unlimited God. You are exalted, that is you are exalted, that is you are exalted, unlimited God. Jehovah, you are.
We lift your name on high. Shout hallelujah. 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 for joining us today this is ttw and i just want to officially welcome everyone who is connected to us at this moment live and those who watch us later we say thank you for being part of us we appreciate you for your time and your sacrifice so this is called the transforming woman in short it is ctw and the scripture for the vision is second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 which says but we all with unveiled face beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. This is a place where women gather regardless of their age, their status, their denomination, for fellowship to behold the face of our Master Jesus Christ. And in the course of that, evaluate ourselves daily, not for condemnation, but for spiritual growth. It is a place where women are trained to understand times, seasons, and stand the gap in the place of prayer for, their, for themselves, family, and the nation. We use the word woman as per the title instead of women because it is a personalized decision to be made by every woman depending on how hungry she is in need of the master's help. We gather for now every Monday to worship, share the word of God, and pray our way into our pre-designed destinies. It is a gathering of total surrender and a place of a place where we have only one objective and no alternative, which is either Jesus or Jesus. Our mission is to gather to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and evaluate our lives daily for spiritual good. Our vision is to become women who are com completely broken in the spirit and are conscious of their lives in the secret. Our values are love, humility, compassion, self-control, and sacrifice. So this is that Diane will be leading us. I just want to thank you, and then we pray that the Holy Ghost is going to teach us something out of our message today. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you all excited to be here? Yeah. It's the 11th month. God is really great indeed. Thank you everyone that um, joined today. We are grateful. We are uh, pleased to have you here. Thank you for your, for your dedication and thank you. May the Lord meet you at the point of your need. And may the Lord give you the 11th hour miracle in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. So we continue from the last time I thought, uh, thought about um, the spiritual woman is a mad woman. And that is the anchor scripture was Hosea 
97. And I think I've talked about five points then. That which is the spiritual man, she is bold in her conviction and she is a woman of faith. She's prayerful and she, um, she, she can fast and she is submissive. That is where we stop that day. You know. uh, now, we, today I'm going to continue from the number six, which is the she is gentle. Gentility is the fruit of the spirit. If y'all see in the, in the book of Galatians, I believe efficient, God talks about the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit and gentility is one of the, 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 the fruits of the spirit. So we say gentility is, is, is one of the uh, fruit of the spirit and it's powerful than the way we see it or perceive it. Even the spirit of God sees gentleness as something worthy of producing. And it says, because it is one of the fruit of the spirit, we should make effort and, and conscious decision to display it always. So gentility doesn't make, 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 doesn't mean weakness, you know, and uh, a gentle person definitely have the spirit of love. If you, are, you don't have the spirit of love, you cannot be gentle in any way. You cannot be gentle to anyone. Some people think this everything is about, you know, uh, aggressiveness. Like you have, there's a place where you can be aggressive, you know, because the, the Bible says uh, since the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and only the violence taken by force, but not that kind of violence. When you're dealing with people as a Christian, you know, your character, people look at your character. They see what you are doing. They see how you talk to people. They see how you treat people. So when you're treating people in, with gentleness, that shows that you have the spirit of God in you. You have one of the spirit of, 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 of fruit of the spirit and you have the spirit of love in you. And the power of gentleness give, goes beyond the word that we speak. So it's not just a word. It's our actions, it's the things that we do every day, the way you know our character, our behavior towards everything, even towards our service to God. It goes beyond what we say. You might just say this, but your character does not show that what you say, you know, kind of uh, connect to what you do, your behavior. People will not believe you. And also it's a, it is something that cannot be bought but given by the Holy Spirit. So if you lack gentleness, it's something that you can go on your knees and ask the Holy Spirit, because they said the Holy Spirit is gentle, it's calm, it's peaceful. So a gentle person have peace all around them. They bring peace around people. When you are gentle, you exhibit the spirit of peace. You bring calm in the situation, a situation whereby there's too much chaos or Fear when you are gentle with your words, what you say to people, you will just bring calmness to them. We take away that fear, we chase away the spirit of fear. And it said, um, gentleness can swallow anger and calm and calm every situation. It brings peace around you, just like I say, it can swallow anger. Because when somebody is angry and you to you try to respond, you know, to that person with anger. Two people cannot make a right. Wrong, two wrongs cannot make a right. So you have to be gentle. When you are gentle, it takes away that anger spirit in that person. Even around you, around your home, if one person is hot, one person has to be calm, one person has to be gentle. If one person is harsh with their word, you reply them with the, with the words that are calm, with words that are loving and with gentleness. Mm -hmm. That is how you control a situation. There are some situations you won't say, okay, you have to win. Sometimes we have to lose so that peace can reign. Not because we are losing. That doesn't mean sure you are, you are weak, but that shows you are meek. You are meek and you have the spirit of meekness. And that's what God uh, requires us to do. And in the book of Ephesians 4, 2, it says, life, a life worthy of Christ calling will be completely humble and gentle. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. 
that is what gentility is. When you have the spirit of gentleness, you are gentle, you bring love, you are patient, you have patience. And then the book of Proverbs also um, 15, five, it says, accept what, it's a, self, a self answer, turn away route, but, 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 uh, but grievous, but grievous word, stir up anger. A soft word turn away anger. It turns away around. It calms somebody. It brings peace. It brings order. Just like uh, this month, you know, we're talking about is a month of rest and peace. And other people say it's a month of balance because of one plus one. And it's a month of order. So when you are gentle, you bring order in this every situation. And God will help us to continue to be gentle and to, 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 you know, to control every situation that sometimes it takes wisdom. It takes wisdom and humility. And we're going to talk about the hum uh, humility. It said, a spiritual woman, she is humble. What does it mean to be humble? Sometimes that is uh, one of the things that a lot of us struggle with. Humility. Humility. He said humility does not mean bowing down to anybody. Even when you are humble, you can still be bowing down, but you're standing tall, straight. You're standing tall. You are winning. When you humble yourself, you're not losing. People will see you that you are bowing down to every situation. No. But in the spirit realm, you are the one who is up. Who is up. And it says also, until you come to the end of yourself, you are not humble yet. A humble woman is selfless giver in service to every capacity, to young or to old people. It does not matter whether that person senior you or you are older than that person when you are humble. You know, you respond to people, you respect people. The same way you respect somebody that is older than you, that's how you respect somebody that is younger than you. They say until you come to the end of yourself, like you put yourself aside, you are selfless. You're not thinking about yourself, but you are thinking about that person. You are thinking about what can I do? Even a, somebody that you are, you are younger, let's say you attend a, a, a friend's, maybe a friend's wedding. You know, some people will just choose to take the high table or they, they wear their clothes, they wear their shoes, they don't want. That's just a typical example I'm giving. But some people, you see them, regardless of that person that, even if that person that is getting married is their younger sister or somebody that they're, 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 they're senior in every capacity, some of them will get up we we'll go, what do you want me to do? They'll go and ask that person that is their day, that is getting married or that is, is being celebrated. What do you want me to do? You see them running around, running around. That is humility. You are not looking at that person, oh, this one that ha, this one that I've seen her, I've seen her, I've seen her and her lowest, you know, level and all that. No, but you are putting yourself out there. You are putting yourself aside. You are saying this today, I'm going to serve. I'm going to help this person. I'm going to celebrate with this person. That shows that you are happy for what is going on in their life. And you are looking forward to, you know, to join them in that celebration and share their day. That is what he called humility. And he said humility is not something that is being demanded from a, a it's not what is being demanded from anybody. A spiritual woman, she do, she do everything willingly without choosing when to do it or how to do it. She do it with ease. When you are humble, you do things with ease. You know, you serve with ease, you smile with ease, you, your words are seasoned. You say them, you say them with smile. Even when you are angry, like, you know, people will not know because of the humility, because of that spirit of God is working in you and you know you choose your words, you choose how to act, you control the situation, you control yourself in every situation. And I, hear, I added here, it is not done only to the people you love or you know, or the people that you benefit from. Just like I say, you don't humble yourself to the people you know. You say only to the people I know, only to my father, only to my mother. That person is that person, they have their own daughters, let their own daughter serve them or let their own daughter be humble to them. No, you are not doing it to the people you know or to the people that you think you seek favor from. 
Like, oh, if I humble myself, I help this, my, my supervisor, eh, she will help me. No, you are doing it because the spirit of God in you is working and is asking you to be humble. That's, and in the book of John 3, 30, it says, he must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. Who is he talking about? God, the spirit of God must become greater and greater. And you, and you reduce yourself. When you are reduced and God is glorified, is lifted in you. And you see people will begin to lift you. People will begin to hold you in high esteem. People are be will begin to look up to you, will begin to adore you. People will begin to favor you without them even wanting to do it. Because why? You are less. They seen the God in you. God is at work in you. And you are humbling yourself everywhere you go. You know, people are like, ah, that woman, she's humble. Do you know there are some people that once you call their name, people will say, ah, that woman, she's humble, very humble woman. What would they say about me or about anybody if they heard their name? Would they say, oh, she's humble, she's nice, she's gentle, she's caring, she's loving? Would they be said about you? That you are humble, you are all, you have all the spirit and uh, fruit of the spirit. And in the book also, I took a scripture in the book of Luke um, 14, 11, it says, for those who exalted themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Our Father in the Lord gave an example one time, say when they invite him to like, uh, to like uh, 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 maybe a uh, um, party or whatever, like he went to occasion, he said he liked to go sit in where the, the he will he like to go sit in the crowd, not on the high table, you say because sometimes when you just rush, you say, Oh, you are everything you think because you are dignitary. Before they call you, you just went to the high table and sit down. And you will be shocked when you're sitting there, they'll come and say, Ah, oh, sorry, this seat belongs to somebody. He says, So when you go to places, just hide yourself. Put yourself where you know everybody is. Put yourself in the same level with everybody and let God exalt you. Let God exalt you. I mean, the Lord give us the spirit of humility in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in the book of Proverbs also, 11, no, yes, uh, Proverbs 11 and 2 say, pride commit, commit, uh, 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 yeah, pride commit, then, um, then, then commit disgrace, which another version say, pride commit, then commit shame, but with humility come wisdom. So I say, when pride comes, You'll be put to shame when you have pride. Pride comes, then disgrace or shame come. But with humility, wisdom. So a humble person has wisdom. It pays to be humble. In every capacity, it pays to be humble. It pays to be humble. And humility will take you far in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God continue to give us the spirit of humility. And number eight, it says she loves the word of God. The word of God, the word of God, that is a word. He said, by the words of his mouth, he formed the whole earth. So when we speak the word of God, we are forming things. When we speak the word of God, we are destroying things. He gave us the power to pull down, to tear apart, to run through the troops with the word of God. It's the word of God in your mouth that will, will make you overcome some certain situation. Devil will put you to test. I believe in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus Christ just went after he was baptized at the end of chapter 3, Matthew 3, and he went in the spirit of God, drove him into the wilderness. Right after he went on 40 days in the wilderness, no food, no water, Jesus Christ, the moment Jesus Christ came out, guess who came after him to tempt him? The devil. Even the devil called the word of God. The devil is the one who is calling the word of God for Jesus. So if you think you know the word of God enough, wait until you come face to face with the devil. He will show you that ah, he's a Bible scholar. We are just a Bible student. <laughs> Even Jesus has to reply him with the word of God. So Jesus Christ himself, that, ha that he is God in man's flesh. He has to, he do not use his own words to reply Satan. He used the word of God to reply him. That's how he defeats the devil. You can only defeat the devil and you can only crumble some 
speak some uh, in strongholds by the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is powerful. It is powerful. The word of the Lord, I say here, the word of the Lord guide, direct, comfort, strengthen, and instruct us. Our ability to live in abundance is designed by the word of the Lord. The word exposed the deep, uh, uh, the, the word exposed the, the deception of the enemy and reveals the true purpose of life. The word of the Lord is light that shines through darkness. And in the book of Psalm, 119 30 it said the entrance of thy word giveth light it gives understanding and unto the simple the entrance of the word giveth light we get light it gives understanding so that means if you lack the word of god you lack understanding that means if you lack the word of god you are just living in darkness so you need the word of god to see around you you need the word of god for light to shine through you when you don't know the word of God, you don't know anything. You can be foolish in the eyes of people. The word of God is respected everywhere you go, you, even by the unbelievers. Sometimes the unbelievers will say, you know what? We don't believe this. We don't believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. They are lying. They know it's in their own book too. Whatever book they are reading, they know they are. They, it is in the book. And they know Jesus Christ is light. That's why they cannot stand the truth. They cannot stand the word of God. And in the book of Psalm 119.10, also it said, the word is lamped unto my feet and a light unto my path. So for you to know the direction you're going to, for you to know where you're heading to, because if you are a man that, you can, if you get up in a, let's say the electricity went out and you have no torchlight, you have no candle, you have no lamp. You say you start coming down, the, let's say you are upstairs and you want to come downstairs. You start, you know, you start trying to follow the wall. You can trip and fall because you are walking in darkness. You have no light. Your path has no light. You have no light. That lamp is not there to show you where you are putting your step. Where, what, what step are you taking? But when you have the light of God, it says lamp to my feet. You will get up and walk boldly. You will go places without you know, using GPS because you know where you're going to because the light is directing you. The light is lamp to my feet. And also in the book of Joshua 1.8, he said, keep the, keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you might be careful to do everything written. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Joshua 1 8. So that means if you lack the word of God, you lack prosperity and you will not be successful. It's the word of God. You know, when they say you shall decree, because the Bible says we shall decree a thing, it shall be established. So if the devil is telling you, oh, you are not good enough to do this, you say, devil, I am good enough. When you go for a job interview, when you have all this fear, or the devil is whispering to you, or you're not going to get this job, you tell the devil, I will get this job. This job is mine. It does not matter. If there's 50 people that are interviewing today, I will be the one to get this job. If there's only one spot for, for that company, for that, for, 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 for that company to hire somebody, I will have that one spot. That is the word of God. He said, only then you will be successful and be prosperous. So the word of God brings prosperity, not just monetary prosperity, material prosperity, but life, life. It brings life into you. In every situation, when you are, when the doctor gives you a report, you, you take it, you say, God, this is not your word. This is the word of the doctor. And you find the word of God that say what it says about that situation and you begin to speak it. You say, by your, by your, by your strap, I'm healed. I would not take this report. I would not agree to this report. The word of the Lord brings prosperity in every aspect of your life and it brings you success. 
So if you lack the word of the Lord, you lack prosperity, you lack success. I mean, the Lord give us the, the ability to continue to stay in the word in Jesus' name. And he say, and then number nine say, she is merciful and forgiving. <laughs> that is another big one. That is another big one. Forgiveness, mercy, mercy and forgiveness. He said his mercies are new every day. So we can understand why we ourselves need to give mercy and forgiveness. Why? Because God is merciful unto us, regardless of what we do, how black our sin is, wherever we went to, we come back, God will still, when we go on onto our knees, we say, Father, forgive us. He's merciful. He said, my, his mercy are new every morning. It's by his mercy that we are alive. So how is it when you, somebody offend you or somebody did, I know, you know, we also, I mean, we are, no, we not say we're righteous. No one of us is perfect. We must have offended people in our life. But if those people say they will not forgive us, how can we feel? When you go to somebody, even go on your knees and kneel down and say, please forgive me for my sin. And that person look you straight into your eyes and say, I will never forgive you. They will say till they die or till their enemy die, they will never forgive. And I remember a testimony our father and the Lord was giving you was praying for somebody. No, no, I, it wasn't him. There's a man of God that uh, Yongi Cho, I don't know if you all know Yongi Cho, one of the greatest ministers in, in China. He was praying for a man of God that he made. The man had cancer. And he was praying for the man. Well, immediately he stopped praying. The spirit of the Lord told him, stop praying for him. He said, tell him to forgive his ex-wife. And once he, 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 once he forgive that woman, his healing. You don't even need to pray. I will heal him. That's what the Lord said. And the man of God look at him. He say, "You need to forgive your ex-wife." Ah, that man just started crying. He started crying. He said, "Lie, lie over his dead body before he forgive her." So the man of God told him, "That is just your remedy for healing. That is all you need to do, and God will heal this cancer, take it away from you." So that's how I know bitterness. They say if you look, if you're asking God for, for anything, when, even when you pray, God will not hear if you have bitterness in your heart or when you're holding somebody, holding grudge against somebody. And this man said, no, he started to narrate all this, the, the pain he went through. This man is a military man that was sent to war for years. You know, it's all, during all these olden days, maybe World War I, II, or three. that man was in the uh, war front. He could have been killed. So every money they are giving this man, he will send it to his wife. He will tell his slave, start, go buy land, start building house, start building this for us. So by the time the war finished, when he come home, he have a place to stay with his wife. Then they will start making children. This is a young guy. They don't even have a child. But when this man came back, this wife built the house. Yes, she did build the house, but she's living in the house with another man. She even have children grown up children for that man. And he went, he doesn't know where to find her. Eventually people told him where she was. He went, he found her. He asked her, what is going on? She told him she couldn't wait any longer and she married him. He said, and the money and the house that I've been sending you, she said, what money? He said, oh, so you expect me to wait for you this long and to build a house and, and come and give it to you? The children, she called the children and her husband, they beat on that man to the extent they broke his bones. So that man left, since he left, he has to pick up his broken pieces, start life all over. So you see why you couldn't forgive this woman. But the Lord is telling him, if only you can forgive this woman, if you forgive this woman, that is all. That cancer, you don't have to go through the stress of chemo, losing your hair dying in pain, taking medication, I will take away the cancer. But this man say no. Why? Because of bitterness. So when God asks us to forgive, it's not because God himself, he's a forgiving father because he's used to it. So we, for us to be like children of God, we, for us to be Christian, we have to have the spirit of forgiveness. We have to forgive. 
God knows how hard it is, but he still forgives with all us. And you can imagine how many people are in this world every day. You know how many people sin unto the Lord? So we, maybe it's just one person that offends us. But God still forgives everyone. He forgives us. Forgiveness is not for somebody, for that person that offended you. It's for your own self. It's for your own peace of mind. It's for your own healing. Forgiveness brings healing. It brings peace of mind. It brings restoration. It brings lifting. Forgiveness heals our soul. And in the book of, um, in the book of Matthew 9.13, it says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. This is the law saying, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So you can give all you can give. You can sow your house. You can build somebody a house. You can give them your car. You can have all the money to throw. You know, God does not desire sacrifice. He desires mercy. Mercy unto others. Mercy to ourselves. Some people sometimes it's even hard to forgive their own self. Some people cannot even forgive their own self. For something that you have done years ago because the devil keep bringing it up to you, keep throwing it at your face, and you keep remembering, you say, ah, how can I go past this? When you cannot go past, you know, heartbroken, you cannot go past, you know, your pain, you cannot go past your sin, you cannot forget the sin that you have committed when, before you gave your life to Christ. That means you have not forgiven yourself. And God say, I have forgiven you. He said, I've taken your sin as far as the, earth, the heaven is from the earth. He said, that's how he separated our sin from us. And he will never remember it, them. But we, we cannot even forgive ourselves. And in the book of Matthew 14, in Matthew um, 6, 14, he said, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your father, your heavenly father will also forgive you. So God is telling him, until you forgive others, your own forgiveness is not guaranteed. Your own forgiveness is not sure. So it pays for us to forgive because it brings healing. And in the book of 2 Chronicles 39, be part of it, it says, for the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face away from you. If you return to him, that's God is saying. He's gracious, he's merciful, he's compassionate. If we sin and we come back to him and say, Father, forgive me, I've sinned against you. He said he will forgive us. He will forgive us. He will not turn his face away from us. So who are we to turn our face away from somebody? If God, the Father, the creator of the universe, the almighty God cannot turn his face away from us. We should not turn ourselves. When your child for, uh, when your child uh, sin against you, forgive your husband, your, your friends, our family members. We that have siblings, a lot of siblings, sometimes it's hard to deal with them. You just like, ah, you, you don't even know. So, but God gave us the grace. The grace is available. The grace, if you don't know how, go on your knees, ask the Holy Spirit, tell the Holy Spirit, Father, I want to forgive this person. Teach me how to forgive. And forgiveness is not when you say, okay, you forgive. You see that person, oh my God, your face will be squeezed. You'll be like, everybody will see it written. The people that knows that that person offended you, they will even know before you even open your mouth, they look at your facial expression, they know, oh, it's because of this person. When they turn, they see the person coming, they say, oh, they don't even have to say anything. They say, oh, that person is coming, that's why. May the Lord, the Holy Spirit, give us the ability to forgive others and forgive ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, number 10, almost done, yes. So, and in number 10, or oh, before then, let me take this. This is a good one. The Matthew 5, 23 to 24 say, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember that your brother or sister sinned against you. He said, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and reconcile with them and come back and offer your gift, your sacrifice. 
So God doesn't even accept our offering. Our tithes and all that, we might be paying tithe and offering. We think we are doing it, but as long as we, are, we have unforgiveness in our, in our heart, God is saying that. Put it down. Go back. Reconcile. Reconcile. May God help us. Number 10 say she is dependable. A spiritual woman, she is dependable on God and other people are dependable on her. So you can see when you depend on God, you draw your strength from God. You look up to God. Other people look up to you. I know in our families, we are a, lot, a lot of us that maybe we are the first child. You know, our siblings are looking up to us. But who are we looking up to? I used to tell my younger ones that I wish I have a senior sister that, you know, that can make the mistake. Then now tell me about her mistake so I can learn from her mistake. That way I will not repeat that mistake. But a lot of us don't. We only look up to God. We depend on God for everything. We depend on God for everything. Where we are today is not because we have coaches, life coaches. It's not because we have mentors. It's not because even we have senior brother, senior sister there that can tell us, even our parents, you can know, you know that some of us, our parents are not even born again. Even the ones that are born again, they are not always there to teach us the word of God, you know, to make us turn. And I always tell my younger ones, had been I know what I know now about God, like 10 years ago, my life will have not been like this. But I thank God for the salvation of God. I thank God. And you say, okay, here he say, um, he say, and she's de she dependable others. Her, her trademark is 100% trusting and completely depending on God. The trademark of spiritual woman is 100%. Even me, I say 110. I add 10. 110% depending, trusting and depending completely on God. She is no weaver. She's not looking up to anybody. She's not looking to to the government, to her finances, to her bank account, to her job. No, she's completely depending on God and trusting God. She have no other source but God. She knows without God, she cannot do anything. She don't look to the right. She don't look to the left, to the front or to her back, but she keep her eyes and focus on the Lord. When others are looking to human connections, when others are running up and down, oh, I know this person. This person can connect me to this person, a spiritual woman. She is not. She is looking up to God. Her focus, attention, and everything, spirit, soul, and mind is on God. She's not thinking about tomorrow, how she can make it through tomorrow, because she knows God can do it. She know God is able to see her too. And in the book of Psalm 121, verse 1, he said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hill from whence cometh my help. That is a spiritual woman. She doesn't look to the right. She doesn't look to the left. She doesn't look behind. She doesn't look, look somewhere else or look for human connection. She's looking up to the Lord. Who's her help come from? And another scripture in Psalm 23, verse 4 says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Are you the kind of woman when the de devil comes knocking at your door? Do you run back? You just slam your door and run back? Or you take a stand? You open the door wide. You take a stand and stand by the door. You say, devil, you see this place? Your name is not added on this address. You don't receive your mail in my address. Go back to where you come from. Is it, are you the kind of one that you see your child is sick? You just take him, the first thing, you run him to the to, to, to emergency room, or you stand and read scriptures over him. Take your anointing oil, anoint the child, or use communion, pray over it, declare the blood of Jesus, have the child drink it and see what God can do. Are you the kind of woman when the devil come after your husband or after your family, your siblings, your work, you run? 
you start calling people. Hey, can you join me in prayer? No. And my father and the Lord said, the prayer that you pray, you pray for yourself is the greatest prayer ever. And the preaching that you preach to yourself is the greatest preaching because it's only you know where it's hurting you. It's only you know where the sh your shoe is pinching you. So it's only you that will stand and declare, say, okay, I know this side, this side, this place, this place, I need to correct this. And how do you do it? By the authority that is in the word of God. By looking up to God, not looking up to anybody. Putting your focus, looking up to the hills. Onto the hills, where your help coming from. So the devil, when the devil knows you are not that, you're that kind of person, even when he's approaching your door, he saw your address, you'll be like, ah, this one, no, I don't receive my mail here. My mail doesn't come here. He will turn back and run away. May the Lord give us the power to defeat our enemies, to defeat the devil in the name of Jesus. And in Psalm 27, verse 1, he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? No one. When you know the Lord, when you know your God, a spiritual woman that know the spirit realm. She know how to read the radar. She know how to reach the weather. She know what is coming. Before it even landed, she knows. She send it back. She send it back. She say, no. When you see dream, or God show you a dream that you don't like. This not, that's not the time to, to get up and start calling your friends. Ah, I have this this dream, or even your pastor, or even whoever you think you trust. Sometimes, even not even your husband, or your, your sister, or your roommate, is a time for you to just say, ah, a devil, no, you cannot do this. Papa will always say, oh, if you dream any bad dream about him, that you undream that dream, that he doesn't care, because he did not send you to see bad dreams for him. So if you dream bad dream, you undo, the dream, you own dream the dream. You tell the devil, no, this one, it cannot stand. It shall not come to pass. Isaiah 7, 7. No, it shall not come to pass. It shall not happen. Not on my watch. That's the kind of woman God wants us to be. Because we, the women, we own the house, whether we like it or not. Sometimes the men don't pay attention. They are mostly carried away, but it's we that we pay attention to the children. We look at if the, the, body, if the temperature of your child's body change, you know. If the appetite of your child change, or your husband, or your siblings, if you are living with them. Even your bosses at work. When they are to to change, you know. You pay attention. But some people don't. But a spiritual woman will know. She'll say, okay, I'm in trouble. Let me enter my secret place. And the book of Matthew 10, 13, it says, don't be afraid. He said, don't be afraid. You are what more than sparrow. God said, you what more than sparrow. Do not be afraid. You are important to God. If God is telling you are important to him, then take God very, tell God as a very, the most important person too in your life. Look up to him. Call on him. He'll always be there. God is telling you are valuable to him. There's no way you can open your mouth and cry to God. God will not answer you. If you truly cry from your heart, you are important to him. You are what? You what more than the world to him. And Psalm 73 verse 26 say, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is my strength. God is my strength. God is my strength. It's the strength of my heart and my portion forever. He's our portion forever. Hayakapata. And in the books of Acts, verse, uh, verse nine, chapter 9, verse 39, B says, This is where I, um, this all this scripture is you are about, about you depending on God. Then in the book of Acts 9, 39, B says, All the women whose husband had died. Show the, the, show the clothes that Dorcas has made for them while they were with them. At 939, these are a group of widows that their husband died. But when this woman, Dorcas, if you don't know the story of Dorcas, you need to go read it. 
she is a woman that the whole community, the whole widows are depending on. She's the woman that carry her community. She's the woman that sacrifice, she's selfless, she give. She make clothes for all these women. She cover people, she give, she keep them warm. She keep them protected because clothes in the spiritual realm, it could be in physically, it cover our nakedness, but clothes in spiritual realm, it, 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 is, it, it is different than covering, it, it is more than just covering your nakedness. It more than just covering your nakedness. It keeps you warm. When you are naked, you are open to attack. So I'm sure when Dorcas made that clothes, she's not just giving it to those women. I'm sure she prayed over them because she's a woman of God. I'm sure she decreed what she wants to be in her life, whatever that she desire in her life, she'll be in the life of those people. So it's more than just a physical clothes. And that's why when this woman died, all the widows gathered. They said, no, it cannot be. This woman cannot die. This is a woman that keep, kept us warm. She give us clothes, she cover us, she take care of us. It cannot be, they brought all the clothes as a point of contact. And God has no choice. You can put God in a situation whereby, like God will say, no, I don't have choice. This one, I have to do what she's asking me to do. And they put God in that position that God said, no, this woman, she has to come back to life. And Dorcas came back to life. Today, if anything happened to you, who will speak for you? How many lives do we touch? What have we done? Or do they know us with causing confusion, fighting here and there, gossiping? Is that what they know us for? Or when they call our name, people will be even running away. They say, ah, this one, I don't want her trouble. I beg, let her know, let her not even hear me calling her name. Oh, are you the kind of woman, are we the kind of women that when people call her name, they'll say, ah, this one, I will stand for her. Even when you are not there, people will be fighting for you. When somebody says something evil against you, do you know people, there are people like that, people will be fighting for them and say, no, this one, it cannot be. This person that I know, they will stand up for you. They will fight for you. They will speak on your behalf. Why? Because you are Dorcas of our own time. So we are all dockers. You don't look at your hand like, God, do not give me anything. I don't have anything to give. No, you have something in you. You have something in you. You have something in your hand. If only we can all look around, there's something we can do. Not just by giving material things and all that. Our time, our words, we have to season it with love, with kindness. There are some words like when you say it, you don't take it back. You cannot take it back. Even the Bible says the angels of God are waiting. Power of confession. Power of your word. When you say evil, the, the angels take it and run it with it. The devil take it and run it with it. And he makes sure he bring it to pass. And when you say good, the angel of God take it and run it, run with it to the throne of grace and mercy. And present it to God. And God will see that it happened. So I pray that God will continue to give us the ability to know our what, number one. Number two, to stand for justice. To be women of peace, women of love, women of humility, women, women that have gentle heart. Let it be said when they call our name, people will say, ah, this one, ah, she's a blessing to me. Some people will look at their hand and say, if this is not for this woman, no, God use her. It's not by your own power, it's by the power of God. But people will say, if not for this woman, oh, my child will have not gone to school, will not have food to eat. My child will not, I wouldn't have had place to lay my head. May God help us. And may God help us to reach out people because we are all here. That's the first commandment God gave his disciples. He said, go ye into the world. We are all ministers. Whether you stand on the pulpit, whether you pray for somebody on the side, whether you are interceding for people in your secret place, that's what God. You just have to check and look at yourself. What is your strength? And what does God put in your hand to work with? And I pray God will show us and give us a revelation of the things that he put in our hands, even in our life, 
to be able to reach out our generation, to be able to reach out people that are in need and to pray for those who need prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your word. And that's what I wanted to bring to you today. I hope you know you are able to you know to get one thing out of this because i know this has blessed me i went over it all before like i read it i went back i said okay father let me read this let me begin to preach to myself first begin to you know minister to myself before i come even and sit down but and i thank god for the opportunity and for the privilege to even bring this word because I thank God. That's all I can say. Thank you, yeah. Thank you very much. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sister Diane, for that word. Just to throw um, a little bit of emphasis, we are grateful for what you have shared. I had to bring my notes, so gentility, humility, a woman who loves God, being merciful. But there's just one thing I want to say, and that's with regards to our meeting every Monday. I told God, and I've been praying, even before TTW started, even before both of us, the two of us started praying, you know, there's one thing, as I was thinking about executing my, my vision in the future, one thing I was asking God was, Father, break me. It's important. And the vision is better from the, um, from the burden of the fact that we as women, we, a lot of Christian women, we have a lot of things we do. That's why one of our, our main um, vision is to become women are completely broken in the spirit. Maybe most of us are so, so holy, but I've been an individual who has not really had a good pass, meaning some sometimes myself say, ah, which you don't do. Have you heard of what people have done? I'm not because I'm not comparing what people have done. I know I've made certain mistakes. And those are things that some of us find ourselves in. You know, we are Christians. People see us outside as Christians, but we are not conscious of our life in the secret. And I finally conclude that most of the mistakes I made in life, or most of the things I did under the canopy of being a Christian, you know, I did was because of one thing. I did not fear God. And that's why the passion was better. How can we be women? We are conscious of our life in the secret. It's not about I'm doing this thing because nobody's seen me. No. I don't do the things I don't do because I fear God. Not because I want people to see me or when nobody's seeing me now, I do those wrong things. No. So we can raise a generation of women who will be passionate for God, one, who will fear God in the secret. We are no longer interested in the life of the public, the life of the sick. When you are alone, what do we do when nobody's watching us? That's our main vision. And so every time, I want to believe God that every time we gather here every Monday, you know, we are not just spending a one hour, 30 minutes to please us or, or let's not feel bad that we gather with just the three of us and nobody joined. No, I believe that for a couple of, maybe it's three months now that people have joined us. But I was, I was excited when I was talking to somebody on the phone. I don't know if that was a mistake. She, it was just a slip of tongue or something. But she made, a, she made a, a statement that got, you know, my consciousness. I knew that truly we are not wasting our time. She's, maybe she's the only example for now. But what about the others? Do we waste our time with what we say? If all these things we say here every Monday and we don't live with it after this, I'm one of the people I'm so conscious since CTW started. Like even when I need to, you know, engage with a small argument with my husband, it comes. So that's, it's supposed to play in our lives individually. That's why this is not a church. It has nothing to do about where you worship. It's a place where we can gather as women to be conscious of our life, to be different wherever we go. And that lady, when I was talking to her, so she, made a, she made a statement, although she called my name, she said, uh, you know, they, they, we were talking about um, the transforming woman, the message we made and all. I discovered the person was conscious now of her car. For example, like every time she keeps junk of things in her car, she'll just remember what we said that day. She's like, let me remove it before. <laughs> You know, let me remove these things from my car before they use me as a, as a subject for the next day. So, but she didn't know that what she said, you know, really pricked me when she called me about the phone. She was just saying it like, you know, a password. But I got it and I was excited because that's the way I live too. If I, sometimes I put trash on the side of my car, remember, what do you preach? You, you understand? If you, 
if it's like that. When I go to Walmart, when I go on like before, when I go to a shop to buy dress, now I don't see, you know, like these stores that dresses are so chucked up. Mm -hmm. If it falls on the floor before, we'll just let it be. Now I cannot do it. Mm -hmm. So that's transformation. That's why we are gathered. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to be to it because she's talking about humility. She was talking about love for God. So if we gather here for six months, one year by the grace of God, and we keep coming, and nothing is dropping in our lives, mm -hmm. with our relationship with our children, our husbands, our friends, our colleague, if we still have that type of anger we have, then we are wasting our time. Unless you want to tell me you are so perfect. Please. So we need to live with that conscience. I was just excited, but the person did not know. I was excited. So now we can live in our house and you're like, oh, maybe there's something I need to change. Maybe, you know, you look at your bathroom, the first thing that comes to your mind is CTW. Although they are not seeing, what if Marian walks into my house now? How you get it? So it's not all about me. It's not about the things you say, because I'm also conscious like that. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but it's like a mirror to me. I look at it and I try, even if I cannot meet up, I try, it's always in my mind, oh my, and it's not good, you need to clean that stove. It might be dirty for two days. You need to clean it. TTW is in my mind. That's why we are gathered. And I ask God every time I pray that the purpose for which we gather should be manifested in our life. Yeah. If not, we are wasting our time. We should just yeah. gather to Jesus and gossip. But that's not why we are here. Mm -hmm. That's not why we are here. So it's just a sort of encouragement. So we, every day we gather, it may not be for everybody. But at least there should be one thing. Some of them we have heard over and over. I said there is just a particular platform or a particular person that God has designated mm -hmm. that although you have heard it over and over, it is just through that person's word that will become conscious in your life. So if you might, that's why most, most of the times when we're in sin, it's not because we're not hearing the word of God, but maybe that's not the person that God has designated that will bring deliverance to us. So every woman, every person on planet, there's somebody that God has kept. So it might be TTW, it might still not be TTW, but I believe God that there's one thing that we'll, we'll be able to testify that it has changed because we gather as women. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to be women mm -hmm. the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so because, Amen. because this is what we do every Monday, we are going to go ahead with our intercessory prayers. And what a beautiful day to pray for the nation. Tomorrow is election. I don't know. I follow news like crazy. You think I'm a politician. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just privileged to have my husband gave me an app now that I could follow my CNN and all the rest live on my phone. I think after this, I have to check what's happening now. Because when I got on the morning, that's the first thing I check. I'm so anxious about the election. But as women, as as prayer women, it's an opportunity. What a wonderful day, the day before election for us to pray. You know, Cameroon and Nigeria we have been going through a lot now. We are going through a lot, a lot of war, a lot of killings. Mm -hmm. We have to stand the gap. And yes. I want us to pray. According to the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 6, a week from the King James Version, the Bible says, And I will give peace in the land. Mm -hmm. And you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. Oh, mm -hmm. people in Africa, now people cannot sleep. You sleep with your one eye open and the other eye is closed. And that's not, that's not the plan for God in our lives. Mm -hmm. That's not his agenda. He said, you shall lie down and you will not be afraid. He said, I will read evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. And so we're going to ask God. The first, you know, it's like two sessions. If you try for America, we're going to pray for the election of tomorrow. We're going to ask God for peace, peace, peace. And that he himself will put whoever is due whoever is going to fulfill God's purpose in the land of America. And we're going to use Africa as a point of contact. We're going to legislate peace. There is a lot that happens when women pray, yes. not when women gossip. Yes. And so we're going to raise up our voices and pray for these nations. Ask that the peace of God will reign upon our nations. That will sleep with our eyes closed, will not sleep with our eyes open because we are afraid of the plans of the enemy. So open your mouth and begin to pray for the peace of the nations. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we begin to pray for the countries, for the nations. We pray for America. We pray, oh God, concerning the elections for tomorrow. We know that there is a law that is being legislated in the heavens when women gather. Therefore, my Father, my King, we pray for the nation of America as the whole America, the whole world is looking forward to tomorrow's election. Lord, we pray for peace upon this nation. We pray for peace hey, upon the city yes, states of America. We pray America. for peace of God in this country. Yes, my Lord and my God, 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 that you are wise and let yes, peace be established. Yes, Even when the resort will be ready, God, 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 there will be no fighting. There will be no confusion among the parties. Father, in the name 
name of Jesus Christ, that you, oh God, will choose who you want to rule this country, that will rule it according to your purpose and your mandate, that will rule, oh God, the people the way you want them to rule. In the name of Jesus Christ, as women will legislate this, as women will speak this upon the nation of the USA, we think, oh God, that it shall be a peaceful election, we think that shall be a peaceful election, we declare peace, we declare peace, we also use Cameroon, Nigeria, and every other African country as a point of contact. My Lord, my God, we put an end to killings, we put an end to killings, we put an end to killings, we put an end to the wasting of innocent blood. Father, we decree that whoever of God is causing bloodshed in the lives of these people, Father, they shall eat of their own flesh and they will drink of their own blood. is a matter of time, but it is setting, so setting is, so the fact some, for someone to say you not carry our children, that should be a, a very big error, a very big mistake, so we're going to ask God, the Bible says in the book of Genesis 30, 22, the Bible says, King James will say, and God will never wish, and God hearken to her, and make him alone, for everyone who is believing God for the fruit of the womb, I believe you have been praying, and so we are going to ask God this morning, if you did it before, you have the ability to do it more because he says you will do it. He's not even doing it the same. So, Father, as you remembered Rachel and opened her womb, God concerning everyone believing God for the fruit of the womb, as you remember Rachel, remember them and open their womb in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we seek for your Lord concerning your God, O God of our life. The Bible says, and you remember, Rachel, you have to go God to have prayer, and you open her window. Lord, we pray for anyone believing God for the fruit of the womb, anyone believing to carry their own children. Father, we pray as we make this morning that you remember, Rachel, as you keep on the womb of Rachel, open the womb of every woman believing God for the fruit of the womb. Due for marriage, 
those who are due for marriage and they are still believing God for God this part. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9, this time I read from NIV version. The Bible says, But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to join to passion, to passion of lust. So if they cannot control themselves, what does that mean? If you have the desire to get married, therefore they should be a godless spouse because you know how to prepare every man for a woman. They refuse to go the way of the world. He has prepared every man for a woman. So if you have that desire to get married, they should be, they should be a godless spouse. And so we are going to ask God that every woman connected, related, and associated to us, every woman believing God for settlement, that in the name of Jesus, who we'll, we'll put a demand today, before the end of this year, so remember, see, eight weeks is a lot for God to do something. Oh, yeah. A lot. We are not even saying December you get married, but you meet that person. Hey, hey. And so we are going to put ah. a demand and a date. We are going to open our mouth and pray for every woman believing God for settlement. Before the end of December, they will meet with their spouses. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for every woman that is connected and associated to us, that is believing you for settlement. My Father and my King, I pray your King of glory in the name of Jesus Christ, that Lord all of them will not damage. You say what is the desire yet to get married, that is supposed to be a spouse for them. My Father and my King, I pray I will make it to my destiny. They are not treated right. They have a lot of pain, mystery. We are going to ask God to intervene and make things right. Mm -hmm. Open your mouth and pray for every marriage at the edge of divorce, at the edge to be broken. We decree that there will be an establishment of peace. Women of God, open your mouth and begin to pray for those marriages. Those who are going through a lot of pain, a lot of hard pain, a lot of things that they cannot tell people. My Lord and my God, I pray for every couple. I pray for every power to God that is based on ensures and not enjoying my kid and my father. That was not the agenda when you quit and marriage. We live for the world. Every marriage that is suffering that type of pain. Every marriage is suffering of God. Every marriage that has ensures and enjoying my Lord and my God. I pray your God that will be a reverse. Let him go for ensures to enjoy that. Let him go for ensures to enjoy We flip the picture. We flip the picture. We flip the picture.
understand those that under the Lord Jesus. Before we, we always end with our sacks. Can you get is there anything somebody wants to contribute? Any prayer requests? Anything? May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. Amen. Amen. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. Amen. Amen. May he remember all of your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. Amen. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Amen. We will shout for joy when we, when you are victorious and will lift up our banners in the name of our God. Amen. May the Lord grant all your heart, your, your requests. Amen. Amen. Now I know that the Lord says he's anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Amen. Amen. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Amen. O oh Lord, save the transforming women. Answer us when we call. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for today. We thank you for the privilege to gather. We thank you for the end of today's meeting. We thank you for what you have taught us. We thank you for the word that will continue to live in us after this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your presence. We thank you because the Holy Spirit was here and the Holy Spirit dominated and did what it was assigned to do. We thank you for each and every life represented on this platform. We thank you for those who are unable to join who watch us later. We thank you for those who watch this program. We exalt and we magnify your name for the change that has been seen little by little Amen. in our lives. We thank you because change can only come from above and because you are interested in us, you have decided to work with us on a daily basis. Amen. We are grateful for the month of November. Amen. We thank you because despite the chaos in the year 2020, you have been so merciful and so caring about us. Amen. We thank you because this year we did not lose anyone our loved ones you have preserved. Amen. We exalt and we magnify Amen. you for your grace and your mercy over our lives. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we begin to pray that even as we leave this hour, we will not live from your presence. Amen. We ask, so oh God, that our lives as women will become like a light that will be set upon the mountain top. We refuse to be mediocre. We refuse to be ordinary women. We Amen. ask, so oh God, that on a daily basis as we seek you, Father, let there be a change. Amen. Let our our husbands discover a change. Amen. Let our children discover a change. Amen. Let our community discover a change. Amen. Let the nation at large discover that somebody, somebody, a woman, there is something about you that others don't have. Father, Amen. we pray, your oh God, and we begin to cover this week with the blood of Jesus Lord. Christ. We speak that this blood will intervene for us concerning every evil agenda of our lives this week. We decree that we will meet next week, Monday. There shall be no cash water. There shall be no emergency. Amen. No plan of the enemy will stand. Amen. Wherever they gather, Lord, we pray that their plans be neutralized Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We paralyze every evil hand. We paralyze every evil hand Amen. and we decree that their hands will not be able to perform their counsel concerning our lives Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. We call this week blessed. We call this week favor. Amen. We implement in this week that goodness and mercy shall follow us. Amen. We decree that this week men will come from the north, the south, the west, and the east to favor us. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, the countenance of the most high God shall rest upon us. Amen. His radiance shall be so bright upon our lives Amen. that even the enemy will not be able to stand. Blessed Amen. be your holy name that you have chosen us. We are grateful. Amen. To you be all the glory of our Father. Till we meet again next week, Monday. Let your name be glorified in our lives every day. And let us live with the conscience consciousness of you in our minds in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen and amen
All right.